Hi, this is Professor Joseph. Welcome to Phil 3 Introduction to Logic. This video is for the winter 2022. It's a six week class, but this video will also work for any winter or any summer logic class, just that the dates will be different, but the format's the same. So it's a six week class and I'm just gonna run you through it. My job today is to um, help to give you um, enough information so that you can determine whether you wanna be in this class or not. So this is a normal, you know, 16 week semester class jammed into six weeks. It's not for the faint of heart. It's a lot of work and you got to do it in six weeks time. So you have to be on your A game. So I'm just going to show you very simply what I expect of you. And then you can um, proceed to, you know, stay or drop the class. And I say all this because I've been a student for 25 years um, and I've been around the block and I have a lot of wisdom and insight, you know, in surviving college. I just finished my PhD in May and, you know, I've taken many, many, many years of studying. There's some semesters where I was broke, had too much going on, personal problems, bad breakup, you name it. I've been there too. Um, family member drama and I've taken a semester off right or maybe even two or maybe even a year off so sometimes you just have too much going on in life and it's not time to be in college or it's time to be in college but it's not time to take six classes I have seen some students taking six seven classes working full-time that's psychotic that, that's way too much work but I'm just saying from my perspective you got a lot on your plate so think of me as not just your professor, but also like a life coach. You know, you don't want to take on what you cannot handle. But let's say you, um, you're prepared and you have enough time. You should do well in my class if you just follow these steps. So the very first thing you got to do in my class um, is you have to complete a syllabus quiz and a getting to know you assignment. You have to do that by the first two days of my class. For example, this class is due January 4th, but in another class, the date might be different, but it's the first two days of class. You have to complete those. That lets me know that not only are you in this class, you're actually engaging in Canvas in this class. Because you know, every once in a while I'll have students, they register for their no-shows. So if you don't complete those two assignments by the first two days, I'll drop you from the class, okay? And then the very next thing you want to do is you want to get the book. And the book is not a physical book. It's, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a platform that you have to purchase. So right here, you would go to modules. You want my advice? You literally click register here for MindTap right at the top. That brings you into this window. You click it. You get the book for the semester. So the book is basically an ebook and it's called the MindTap platform. It's in it's inside of Cengage. MindTap is the logic platform that you're going to use for this class. It's very excellent software. You get that. Um, just get the semester package, whatever, four months, you know, um, some of you are taking multiple classes with Cengage and you can get a deal, but whatever it is, uh, mine's taken a long time to load up, doesn't matter, but you can click there and that's when you get your book. Um, I don't wanna hear any excuses like, oh, it's gonna take me a week to get the book. No, it takes you like an hour or two and you go straight to MindTap and you get it just like that. You get the ebook and you get the platform, okay? So don't email me and say, hey, professor, uh, can I buy a hard copy book and not get MindTap and stay in the class? No, you must get MindTap. Or otherwise, feel free to drop the class. Uh, maybe take some other logic class that they don't require MindTap. But me and um, the other logic professor, Sam, we both use MindTap, so you're going to be forced to get it anyway. So anyways, complete the syllabus quiz, the getting to know you form, get your uh, MindTap, and you're golden. Okay, then you can sort of just start doing your readings, watching my videos and start doing your, um, your assignments. So what I'll do now, two things. I'm gonna walk you through your syllabus. The very first page of Canvas is your syllabus. So you scroll all the way down. I'm basically telling you what I expect of you during this semester and your assignments and your dates and all that. And again, if you're from a different um, semester, the dates will be off, but it's the same format, six week class. And once I run you through the syllabus, then I'm going to run you through 
your modules, just what I expect of you throughout the week. Okay, all the way down to the sixth week. Um, and that's it. And then you'll know whether you want to stay in the class or not. Practically speaking, I didn't take logic till my last class in my master's program. And that was way too late in the game for me, but I just didn't know. I just didn't know. I should have taken logic my first semester at Mount Sac. I started college when I got out of the military in 1994, and I've been going to school ever since. Like I said uh, previously, I just finished my PhD at Claremont Graduate University, right down the street from Mount Sac in Claremont. And I finished in May. So finally now I'm not a, uh, an academic student, but I am a student for the rest of my life. We'll, we'll get into what that means. But, you know, as long as you're willing to learn and, you, and you're growing older, as long as you're willing to learn, you're still a student for your whole life. But I mean, academically, I finally finished. I'm no longer an official student. But I wish I would have taken logic my first semester at Mount Sac because then for 25 years, I could have applied what I've learned in logic to every single class. That's how powerful this stuff is. What you learn here in this class will apply to every class you ever take for the rest of your life. You will be able to ask the professor, well, what do you mean by this? I'm not sure what that definition means. I'm not sure that that argument follows from these premises. I mean, it, you, your, your logical gears are gonna be working and it's gonna be better for you because you're gonna challenge what you're being taught. Not that you resist everything, but you're gonna interact with what you've been taught more critically, more logically. And it's a good thing because you want the truth, you want what reality is, and logic's gonna help you get there. It's a system <clears throat> to help you get truth. <clears throat> so let's just start. My name is Joseph, please call me, um, especially when you're emailing me. Hi, Joseph, you, you can address me as Joseph or Professor Kamrowski or Dr. Kamrowski or Professor K or Dr. K, anything you want, but don't call me Mr. Kamrowski, please don't call me Mr. Um, but any of those other um, titles are perfectly fine. Uh, once again, we're in section 30423, but if you're in another class, disregard that because this, this little mini intro video will work for any of the logic classes that are six week, whether it's summer or winter. Um, please email me at jkamroski at mountsac.edu. Do not use Canvas. If you use Canvas, you might have a whole day delay before I get back to you. So that's your warning. Wise students who want to get a hold of me quicker, email me. Students that are not as wise, use Canvas. And if hours and hours and hours go by and you're beating your head against the wall, why isn't he responding? It's because you didn't listen to this video. I told you. Here's why. If I, I carry my phone wherever I go, I can't respond to you through Canvas through my phone. I can't. I have to wait till I get to a computer. But if you email me, I can look right at my email and I can respond to you. Okay. If it's something quick, I can let you know right away. So there you go. My office hours, Monday, Wednesday, 1.30 to 2.30. That's when I'm responding to emails. Um, I mean, I'm literally on campus. So even if you're not inside my on-campus class, um, actually for you, for the winter, I won't be on campus. So disregard that part. I'm not even on campus. But my virtual, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, 1.30 to 2.30. Okay, that's when I'm checking emails. Um, outside of those times, I might not be checking emails. So that's when I'm dedicated. If you want to schedule a Zoom meeting with me, um, just email me saying, you know, and, and schedule a time. Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, like 10 to 15 minute Zoom meeting. I'll totally help you. Um, if you're totally scared to death of an assignment, you're like, I don't know what's happening. I don't understand this. Just Zoom meeting me. If, if, if you've done the reading and you've watched my video and you still want more clarity, that's what I'm here to help you for. I mean, that's, that, sorry, that's my job as a professor. I'm here to help you. And I'm pretty easy going. I know logic's hard. I know it's a struggle to engage with this. When I took logic at my master's class, I thought I was going to die. It was symbolic logic. It was super hard. Every assignment that I ever did in that class, we did in groups outside of class. All me and my buddies, five or six of us got together like, all right, let, and we would help each other figure out stuff. So I understand. And so I'm here to help you. 
This class doesn't have any mandatory Zoom meetings. This is an asynchronous class. I don't have everything uh, scheduled to where you have to log on to Zoom at a certain time. I don't do that. I give you all your assignments when they're due, videos for me to help you through your assignments, and you just submit the work, and that's it. So you are the enforcer in this class of your own grade. You give yourself the points. I'm just the diplomat who gives you the grade at the end, but you, you're the one that enforces your grade by turning in assignments. For example, you're not going to get an A or a B or even a C in this class unless you do the work. You have to do the work to pass, okay? So if you need help with Canvas, call this number. If you need help with Cengage's mind tap, call this number. Some of you will email me, hey, Professor, the, the MindTap website's down. You're emailing the wrong person. But you can let me know. I, I just can't do anything about it. I'm not a MindTap, Cengage, um, computer software engineer. I can't do anything with their website. But if you want to let me know that the website's down, sometimes I'll be like, oh, okay. And I'll just extend the assignment for the class. That will help. But if you have a very specific question with them, you got to call uh, MindTap. They will log into your MindTap account, which I'll show you in a minute. It looks like this. They'll log in and they'll they'll see the class as if they were you and they can help you. So that being said, there's the thinking man overview. Like why why take logic? Um, you know what is it and why is it important? So or why is it important? Logic is the human enterprise is a human enterprise and it is in the business of correct reasoning. In this class, we will analyze how to reason correctly. One of the ways to reason correctly is to use our language in a precise manner. The analysis of language is an instrument of sound thinking in morals, politics, and everyday life. This course is designed to assist students to analyze an argument. So if I were to, if, if I were to summarize what logic is all about, it's about arguments how to engage with them, how to analyze them, how to construct an argument. And in doing so, you'll be correctly reasoning, you might say. So um, you'll avoid faulty conclusions and reasoning. You'll understand levels of meaning and kinds of arguments. You'll avoid verbal pitfalls. You'll, you'll, you'll better understand scientific methods and how to identify value assumptions. Value assumptions are good, bad, and right and wrong claims. Uh, but over the semester, here's, here's questions that you're gonna be thinking about over and over. What's the difference between an assertion and an argument? And why is it important for you to become a critical thinker? How good is an argument? Or how good is the argument you're advancing? What's the difference between an a posteriori and an a priori argument? It's Latin, right? But you'll, you'll understand by the end of the semester what those are. What's the difference between an inductive and a deductive argument? How can one recognize a strong versus a weak argument? These are just general questions. By the end of the class, you'll know those. Uh, if you ever want to become a philosophy Mount SAC major, click that video. Uh, me and the philosophy staff, there's five of us full-timers. Um, we, we, we show you the value. Um, if, you, if you want to become a lawyer and go to law school, I highly suggest becoming a philosophy major. Take logic, critical thinking, ethics. You will literally do well in law school. Or you'll do well in the test to get into law school. And then, But logic's really awesome for that. Um, we've even had people major in philosophy and become medical doctors. But anyways, mind tap. So again, you can't just get a book for this class. You got to get MindTap and um, go back to the link in your modules page to get it. Uh, it's about $65. Don't quote me in the exact price. It's at about that. If you email me and say, hey, professor, there's one for 90 and one for 100 and something. It's, it, the one for this class that works for one semester is about 65-ish. Um, and again, if you have questions, call them. Say, hey, my professor wants me to get mind tap for the semester. What do I do? They'll tell you, okay? There's the number. Cengage is, is awesome in this sense. They give you the first two weeks for free. So the first two weeks in this class, there's no reason you can't complete any assignment. They literally give it to you for free, the platform. After that, and you, and you think to yourself, okay, I want to stay in the class, then you purchase it. If you know damn well you want to stay the whole six weeks, just purchase it right away. Okay, so that's it. 
And after two weeks, if you don't like the class and you drop it and you drop Cengage, they give you a full refund. Okay. So there you go. Uh, course grading, how I break it down. 40% of your grade is the Aplia practice work. I'll show you that. that. That's the main assignment for each section. Then you get um, the practice work. So you get Aplia homework, the official work, and then you get the practice work. The practice work is easy. You might get one to three practice um, works for each assignment. And all you got to do there is get a 50% or higher. You could literally bomb each one. The purpose is to get you exposure to the homework. So you could get a 51% turn it in, you, you pass. But by the time you do a couple of practice works, you get to your actual homework, you do better. That's the gold. And that's the value behind these practice works is to make your homeworks better. Homeworks is 40% of your grade. Practice is 20. The three chapter exams totaled. Chapters two, one, and three, they're worth 20% of your grade. And the final exam itself is just chapter six. That's your final exam. That's worth 20% of your grade. So what you'll find out, and we'll see this later, is I start with chapter two on purpose. Then I do chapter one, then chapter three, then chapter six. I do chapter two because we start with language and meaning. I, I think it's more helpful before you get into chapter one, but we'll see that coming. So out of your Aplia homeworks, I drop the two lowest scores. You could literally skip them or get an F. They just get dropped. And then I drop the two lowest practice works, the exercise sets. You'll see that those are the practice works, two lowest drop of those. So outside of that, um, all the grading's done in Canvas. So when you get MindTap, all your assignments that are in MindTap get automatically transferred to um, your Canvas. So let me show you what MindTap looks for or uh, looks like when you when you click on that link in your module section and you register you'll see this kind of page you can click on chapter two one three and then six we do four chapters here so on chapter two click on one these are the exercise sets oh sorry there's one there's only one for this section so if you click on the section reading this is your mind tap book Second, let me move my computer. It's gonna help my big screen here. So this is your um, this is your mind tap book 2.1. You can read through it and it gives you little answers as you go. You do your reading. There's your whole reading right there. And then it has um, homework examples. You don't have to do these. These are just giving you examples so that by the time you get to your homework and you can click on the answers and see them. So you have that. And then on the exercise set, you click on this. And this is one of the practice um, practice sets that you have to do. Again, I think it's 50 points or higher on your 50% or higher. It's a pass or fail. And then you go to your actual homework assignment. And this is this is the one that um, is graded. You click on it and you're done. So um, pretty much for each section of the chapter, same thing. This one has two exercise sets in the main assignment. This one has two exercise sets, the main assignment. And, and keep in mind, every one of them has the reading. The other thing MindTap lets you do is if you wanted to get a hard copy book with this, I think it's $20 extra. They mail it to you. It's a photocopy book. I actually like books, so I, I, I'd get the book anyways. But if you don't want the book, you have it. You have an ebook. Okay. You have your readings for each section right here. And then on and on. 2.4 has two sets. Then you have your actual homework. Then you have your chapter test. Now, here's the cool part on these, um, on these Apple assignments that, um, that count towards 40% of your grade, you can take those three times. It takes the highest scores out of your three attempts. Keep in mind though, that each attempt you might get different questions, okay? So um, you get three attempts for your homeworks, for your Aplia assignments. I'm not sure you get three attempts in the exercise assignment, but that's different because if you get a 50%, you pass and they're not that hard. So on your chapter test, 
one time to take it. You don't get three attempts on your chapter tests and your final exam. You get one try. Okay. And it's timed. Um, I think you get an hour and a half for each chapter test. Yeah. You get one try and on and on. Go to chapter one. You got your practice assignments. You got your reading. You got your, your real assignment, the aplia. On this one, 1 1.2, you have three exercise sets. But again, these sets, they're easy and they're designed to help you get to the actual homework, okay? And then for each, um, for each chapter, you actually have videos. So let's just see chapter one here, chapter one videos, you have one, two, three, four, five, six. So the book that we use for this class is Hurley. Uh, Hurley's logic right there. And Hurley himself makes these videos. Sometimes he'll use somebody else, but those videos you can click here to watch, but they're also inside your reading. You'll see the little video links. Okay. So they help. But that is pretty much what's involved in your, and then like, for example, chapter six, here's your, wow, that's chapter six has got a lot of videos. Um, and they're also embedded in your reading. So that's mind tap. Let me get out of mind tap now. So that's where all your homework's done. And the good thing about it is it's all online and the, the software for it's very user friendly. If you make a mistake, it actually shows you what you did wrong and how you could do it right. Um, out of me teaching at Mount SAC, I think it was four years just teaching through a straight textbook and I'd have my students type out their answers and bring them to class. Out of doing that for four years, when I first started MindTap to where it was all digital, I asked four logic classes full of students, which one would you prefer, MindTap or the straight book? And all, most of all the students, all of them said MindTap because they thought it was really user friendly and it helped them learn logic better. So as your professor, I'm trying to help you out. I purposely selected this software because I think it'll make you better as a student in this logic class. Okay, so. Those are your assignments. And again, they're all found in your modules page. If you click like exercise set, it directly links you to your mind tap. It's either that or you can go into your mind tap, you know, through a separate website, but it's all there. Go back to home. And here's something very important, um, how you submit your homework. So, I want you to read through this carefully here, but you don't want to hit I'm done grade assignment now unless you're literally done with all three of your attempts. If your first attempt on the actual Aplia assignment is like a 60 and you have two more attempts, don't hit I'm done grade now. What it will do is it will literally grade that one attempt and it will literally disregard the other two that you have and you won't have an option to take the two attempts anymore. Because remember, you get three attempts at your homework. So the only time you push this button is if you're satisfied with all three of your attempts, or let's say on your first attempt, you got like a 95 and you aced in your mind, you thought, oh, that's high enough. Then you hit, I'm done grade now, okay? And then you get the 95 as your grade. But if you get like a 70 or a 60 or even an 80, and you're like, look, I have two more attempts, I'm gonna try them, you do your two attempts. If you are in the middle of homework and you log off, I believe it saves what you've already done. Um, but there's uh, when you're in MindTap, you can hit save. But again, don't hit I'm done grading now unless you are done. Otherwise, you're going to email me and some of you aren't going to watch this video and you're going to make that mistake. And I'm going to say, did you call Cengage? Because again, I'm telling you not to do it. But if you do it, and you don't listen to this video, you got to call them. They'll reset your two attempts, your two remaining attempts or your whatever attempts that you have left, okay? My grading scale, at the end of the semester, I'll look what grade you have, and then I will factor in extra credit. If you want to do extra credit, click this link, and I walk you through every possible extra credit form. There's four of them. You can only choose one. Long story short is I bump your grade up 7% to your final grade. So let's say you got a C plus and you do a full extra credit. I will bump you up two notches up to a B or 7% added to it. So let's say you got a 73, a 
say you got a 73, right? I add 7% to it. So then it becomes an 80, which is a B minus, which at Mount Sac is just a straight all or nothing B. And again, if you're interested in that, click that video. I walk you through it. Student learning outcomes, you can read all six of these. For example, number one, students will learn to distinguish between non-arguments versus arguments. You'll know the difference. What, what is the difference? How are arguments structured? You'll know inductive, deductive, valid, invalid, strong, weak. You'll know all these student learning outcomes by the end of the semester. And your um, measurable objectives, you'll, you'll know these as well. Again, look at these. You can click here for the main website at Mount Sac. Um, add drop deadlines. Uh, again, the most important date for me is January 4th. You got to complete the syllabus quiz and the getting to know you, or I will drop you from the course due to non attendance. You can check out these later dates. The course ends February 13th. Late work. I do not accept late work. In other words, I will accept assignments early, but not late. If you forget and you email me, oh my God, professor, I skipped the homework for the whole week. Uh, well, that's on you. Um, and I'll just, just tell you, hey, look at that syllabus up here where I tell you that maybe the things that you skip, that's your two lowest, that's automatically dropped. So use those wisely. But I have a little bit of grace on you and I say, well, I'll let you make up one aptly a homework and one chapter test. If you, if you forget them, I will let you make up one chapter test and one homework as long as it's not past three days from the original assignment date. So let's say you forget homework or you're too stressed out, you got drama llama issues in your life. Don't worry, we all have it at some points or another and you can't concentrate. You say, oh crap, I missed 6.5, will you extend it? I will, but you get one chance to do that. Unless you're super sick with COVID and you have a doctor's note. A doctor's note, you send that to me and you let me know what your situation is, I will work with you, okay? If you don't have a doctor's note, then these rules remain. Otherwise, you just simply take a zero for that assignment. If it's past three days, you've already used your extension and you've already used your two lowest drops. Uh, as long as you don't get dropped in the first two days for non-attendance, you're, you're staying in my class. If I see that you don't do anything for a week or two, I'm gonna drop you for non-attendance, but. Otherwise, it's your responsibility to drop yourself. You're a college student, you're an adult, so that's on you. Cheating and plagiarism, you can't, we don't really write papers in this class, so it's hard to do that. But I would say that homework, um, if you want to work on homework with other students, hey, totally fine. But you know, the Aplia work, that's pretty much yours to do on your own. Um, test work, you do not work on that with anybody else in the class. The chapter tests you do those on your own and the final exam um, but you know the bottom line with cheating and plagiarism it's not becoming of you as a good student to do this you want to be known as a student with excellence the student who tries who does it on your own that's value as being a good student and you'll you'll you'll, you'll be glad you did that um, but especially if you struggle through it because when you when you know that you've cheated in something and you look back you're like yeah you can't really say you did that on your own, so it's not deserving of excellence, you know, but I'll let you be the judge of that. Classroom behavior, uh, we're, we're online, do whatever you want in your own spare time, and you conduct yourselves responsibly. You're, you're responsible for your own actions at home, so that's it. We're in an online class. Student services, there's a bunch of them at Mount SAC. If you're a veteran, if you're, um, um, if you're, if you think you can be a, um, sorry, if you meet the criteria of any of these um, organizations, call them up, go visit them. They have all kinds of free resources like computer labs, free printers, couches to sleep on, priority registration. For, for example, I'm a disabled veteran. When I was a student at Mount Sac in 94 through 98, I, I had priority registration on every single class. I never had to wait for a class. And I thought, wow, this is awesome. And if I didn't tell you, yes, I was a Mount Sac student for five years. I got an AA degree in liberal arts and an AS degree in radiologic technology. So I became an x-ray tech at Mount Sac. Then I went to Loma Linda and did nuclear medicine. So you might say I've been around the block. And when I was a student at Mount Sac, they didn't have half these resources. So if you, 
if you're Alpha American, if you're if you're a Pacific Islander, if you're a single parent mom that's breastfeeding, if you're a disabled veteran, if you're a dream student, if you're there's so many of these categories and all the ones I've named, if that's you, man, call them up. They have awesome resources and they're there to help you. They're little sub communities within Mount Sac, okay? Bridge program, how to get, you know, how to um, better prepare you for when you transfer out. Disability accommodations. I'm a disabled veteran. I have problems with hearing. Um, and in that sense, I, I have a heart for anybody with any disabilities. Just let me know. Okay. I'll work with you. Um, the writing center. We don't really write papers, so don't worry about that. All right. Course calendar. Now we're at the gold. So again, if we started at the very first page in your um, canvas, this is your syllabus. You scroll all the way down and then you get to your course calendar. And I show you, hey, in six weeks, this is what you're doing in my class. It's pretty straightforward. I even show you the days they're due on, the dates for the, each week. And I'm telling you right here in the first two days, you got to do this. The syllabus and the getting to know you. I'm telling you, you got to register for the mind tap. And then, you know, once you've done those two, you're golden. You got mind tap, complete. 2.1 by Tuesday, 2.1 by Wednesday, by Thursday, 2.3, by Friday, 2.4. Again, this is a fast paced class. No excuses. If you don't think you can handle this type of workload, drop the class because I care for you and your grades. You don't want to bomb the class. You especially don't want to get a D. That's called the kiss of death. And F, you could take the class again, I think two or three times. That's that's fine. But if you get a D, that's stuck on your GPA and that lowers your GPA. You don't want that. OK. So I tell you each day that the assignments do and in your mind tap, they're all set up accordingly. All your assignments are due by midnight, by 11, not by midnight, but by 1159 that night. So as long as you get them in on time, don't start an assignment, by the way, at 1158. Don't be. Come on. Start it before 11 o'clock so that you actually have time to submit it. Some of you, you might start at 11.58 and then all of a sudden you're done with your assignment and Synpage doesn't grade it. Well, guess what? It's because the deadline's at 11.59. You went past it. So again, be smart. Life's already too hard. It's hard enough. Don't wait till the last minute. I, some of you are going to do it. <laughs> Don't do it. Don't wait till the last minute. Um, I'm laughing because that was me in some of my classes. I mean, are you kidding me? Uh, I'm a procrastinator. I, I was a student for 25 years and I, I seriously, I'm in my class and I'm, my mind is blown. If you're this kind of student and you do your assignments ahead of time, I'm, I'm blown away. I'm like, how do you do that? <laughs> I was a student for 25 years and I just can't do things early. I do them on time. I procrastinate. That's just me. But if you want to be better than me, do them on time or do them before time. Um, don't do them after the fact. Um, I call that the laziness factor. If you think that I'm going to work with you in a week to wait basis, you're constantly emailing me, telling me you're so sorry it's late. You're so sorry it's late. I'm telling you right now, don't do it. It's not becoming of you being an excellent student. And that's what I want for you in this class is excellent. I want to help you mold you to be a better student. Once again, I was a student for 25 years. There's nothing you haven't done or seen that I haven't been through myself. Well, yep, I've been through injuries. I've had sickness and in health, financial problems. Man, I had somebody break into my car and rip my steering wheel off and steal my Bob Marley CD. Are you kidding me? And my Otis Threading collection. So here's the deal with me. I, I lived in Ontario in condos. I go down to my car and I'm a student. I, I'm at Mount Sac. I go down to my car. My, my windows are shattered. My my um my stereo is ripped out of my car. And, and and you know what? It's one thing I can and my steering wheel is sitting there on my floor. I'm like, good grief! I could fix the steering wheel. I could replace the clasp. You know what hurt me? You know what caused a pain in my heart when you steal my music, man? My Bob Marley and my Otis Redding. Are you kidding me? And these are the days where we had CDs. Not Nothing was digital, right? Ugh. Anyways, I've been through those times. You got something bad happening in your life. Let me know. I'll work with you. If you're sick, I need a doctor's note. 
But if you say, look, I, I'm not feeling well, um, I might not work with you. I need a doctor's note. But either way, um, if you email me before the assignment's due, chances are I'll work with you. If you email me after the assignment's already, already due, I'm, I'm going to laugh. For example, uh, Professor, can you extend my assignment? Uh, for, I, I'll give you a one extension, right? But if you want me to extend like four assignments for one whole week, and it's a week after they're all due, I'm just going to be like, no, pick one. Because that's just laziness, okay? Don't be lazy. And if you have questions, just email me. Again, I'm like a life coach as well as a professor. I'm here to help you. Uh, let me see here. So yeah, um, you have chapter test. You have your assignments pretty straightforward all the way through. And then you have important dates when they're due. Uh, outside of that, let me go back to up front. Let me go to your modules page. Now your modules, I have everything lined up. The top is your mind tap link. And then each week, again, I have the dates. And, and, and by the way, if you're looking at this video for the summer or a different winter, your dates might be off, but this still works for you because it's the exact same assignments, still six weeks. Okay. So let me just show you. We go, go all the way down through week six. It looks like a lot of assignments. Yes, but this is exactly what's in your mind tap. And I'll show you. Okay, so we go back up to one. First thing you do, the orientation module. Remember, you got to do your syllabus and getting to know you quiz by Tuesday, first two days. These are if you're very new to online education, you want to look at the videos. If you're not new to this, skip all this. Why major in philosophy? You don't care, whatever. But you click on the quiz, you take it. I think I give you three times syllabus quiz, pretty easy. Getting to know you. Oh, I got to change this date. Um, so right here, January 4th. So let me click save. So yeah, on this one, the getting to know you is pretty easy. What, why are you taking the class? What's your major? How many years you've been at Mount Sac? What's your favorite movie or movie series? It's like an icebreaker, right? Everybody gets to know each other. Then you got to post a picture or a short video. You don't have to be in the video. You can film something or you don't have to be in the picture, but you got to do it to show us what's the most perfect scenario for you to relax in. Could be a favorite hobby. And you got to post your response no later than January 4th. You also got to make one reply to one other student. Okay. And that's it. You're done. Those are the mandatory assignments. Got to complete them in the first two days. Once you do that, you got your mind tap. You're ready to dive into your official homework. Each week or each chapter has objectives and PowerPoint slides. These are resources that I made free to you. It basically tells you, hey, by the end of this chapter, you should have this pretty much down, like pretty much mastered. You should be able to know what varieties of, of meaning mean. Um, what, do we, what do we mean when we have cognitive meaning versus emotive meaning? Um, you know, what do we mean by vagueness and ambiguity? So these PowerPoints are really cool. They're just, you know, highlights for what I expect of you during that week. But here's the most important thing of all. So each week you have your main APLIA assignment for each section, right? So, so for week one, you have 2.1, 2.2, 2.3, .2, and 2.4. You have four APLIA assignments in your mind, right? But before you do this aptly assignment, you have the exercise set. Remember, the exercise sets are like practice assignments, right? You get a 50% or higher, you pass, right? That's So you got to do your exercise sets. But before you even do that, you got a video that I make. I make videos for everything you learn in this class where I'm literally walking you through how to do your homework. Um, so... I think one of, I think a couple of them are generic. Let me see. Yeah, this is a generic video that I pulled off of line, like logic. What is it and why is it important? So you can watch that or not watch it. But I really expect you to watch all of my videos. So here's my video. And this is where I'm. Okay. 
Okay, so on my video, you can click it here and. Hi, I'm Joseph Komorowski. Um, today we will be covering the mini lecture out of Curley's Introduction Logic text. We'll be in uh, chapter two, um, language meaning okay. definition. And, and that's just me telling you how to do 2.1. So I have videos for each section, except for chapter three, there's like, I don't know, there's like 30 fallacies. There's like 30 little tiny videos, two or three minute videos. I pull those from online, but all the, all the other harder stuff, I have videos and I'll literally walk you through it. But here's what I expect of you, okay? You wanna succeed in this logic class the best possible way, here's how you do it. You number one, you do your reading. You go to your mind tap for 2.1, you click on, and it'll bring you up to your electronic book. You do your reading for 2.1. So just read it, okay? You don't have to know every single thing that's going on, but just read it once. And then look at the bold words, cognitive, emotive meaning, value claim, look what they are. Just do a simple reading, go through it. Don't skip the readings. I'm telling you right now, if you skip a reading and you go straight to my video, you're gonna struggle. You want to do the reading so that by the time you get to my video, I fill in the gaps that you've missed. And you're like, oh, okay, I got it. Vague expression, ambiguous expression. You know, he gives you examples. And then once you do the actual reading done, then you go to my video. Okay. Then once you're done with my video, then you do the exercise set for that section. Then you do the aptly assignment and then you're done. Okay, so reading, then my video, then the exercise set, then um, your actual, apply, your official aptly assignment and they're done. And that's due January 4th, Tuesday as well. And then you wanna go to your, your next assignment due Wednesday. Um, you do your reading. Um, you have the video. This is a random video that I pulled off online. This is my video. Again, you can see it right here. Click on it, do the video. Um, then you do your exercise sets. Then you do your aptly assignment. Sorry, exercise sets and aptly assignment done. On and on. And that's it. Every assignment's the same way. When you get to, there's one difference down here in chapter three. There's one assignment that's not on MindTap. It's in Canvas. It's called the 12 Angry Men movie. It's a discussion forum assignment. Um, you can watch the movie here for free. It's an awesome movie. It's black and white. It's done in the 50s, but it's really, really awesome. Um, especially once you go through your fallacies, because the movie's all about this. And I give you two examples. I, I basically break down the jurors, their names. You have choices. Option number one, option number two, written assignment. You do all this, you post it in an online forum, you reply to one other student, done. So that's pretty much it. That's the only assignment you will have in Canvas besides MindTap, okay? And again, in, um, in chapter three, uh, on the videos, these aren't videos of me, they're videos of other people that break it down. One day I'll make my own videos on this, but they're fun. And that's pretty much it. So you've, you've, you've been walked through your modules, what's expected of you all the way down to, um, you know, the end. And then the final one is the extra credit turn in at the end of the semester. If you want to do extra credits, do Sunday night. I give you the date. Again, click the video. I tell you how to do all this. And then you'll take whatever forms that are due for each extra credit. And again, you only have one option out of the four. Whatever forms that are due, you upload them here or you cut and paste all the information into Canvas and then I know you've done it. So that is pretty much it for me walking you through your entire syllabus all the way down, what's expected of you, what's due every day kind of thing. It's all in your mind tap. Again, it's a six week course. Again, you got all your modules. And outside of that, I would just say, um, email me if you have any questions. If you want to schedule a Zoom meeting, you want me to help you clarify certain things, schedule a Zoom meeting. I'll try to work with you outside of my office hours, but try to schedule the Zoom meeting during my office hours. And if you can't make it, I'll try to help you outside of that. 
um, email me here instead of using the Canvas inbox. Uh, that's pretty much it. I, I hope you all do well in my course. Um, and other than that, I'll, you know, I'm on campus during the normal semester. So if you run on me, don't, don't feel, um, don't be shy, say hi to me. Um, you know, I'd like to meet you in person, but other than that, I think I've armed you with everything you need. So the first three things, again, the most important thing is complete the syllabus quiz, the discussion forum, getting to know you, get your mind tap platform, register right here. The quickest way to do it is don't go through the Mount Sac bookstore, go right here through Cengage, get it, and then start your homework, okay? Because in the first week, it's gonna be very fast, hard hitting. Um, you're gonna have four assignments due or four aptly assignments in the first week with your um, exercise sets. So you're gonna have, you're gonna be busy, okay? And with that being said, it was a pleasure talking with you, walking you through the course. If you have any questions, just reach out to me.